I get a phone call from Chuck Clark, and I'm back at home in Northern California, and this is kind of a long way away, and he goes, James, I got something you need to see. I said, okay, well, what is it? I can't tell you, but your jaw's going to hit the floor when you see it. I was like, that good? He goes, oh, yeah, that good. I said, I'm canceling all my plans, jumped in my car, and I drove straight through to Rachel, Nevada. I get to his house. This must have been, I'm going to guesstimate 95, 94, 95. Get to his house, and he's got a double wide right near the little alien. And uh, he pops in this VHS tape. I was like, and it was like two guys on the quintessential road trip just to Area 50, you know, the, the surrounding areas, Rachel and the extraterrestrial lonely highway, and they're goofing off the alien, taking videos of each other, just, just the typical road trip out to Area 51, right? Blair Witch Project. Like, totally. And, uh, and then they're goofing off next to the photographs of the alien in the crash disc, and then they're inside the little alien, and I'm like, okay, where's this going? And all of a sudden, and I saw this with my own eyes, all of a sudden, the car's parked, and it's parked out by the black mailbox in the desert, and it's dusk. And the camera is on the armrest between the two seats, and it's slightly cocked, like it's like, it's not level. And it's filming the dashboard and the screen, the, the windscreen, windshield, and, um, and there's two guys in there sounding like, you can't see them, sounding like they're trying to crawl under the seats. I mean, they're freaking out. And then one of them goes, it's, it's over the top of us. It's over the top of us. And I'm like, damn, what is this video? Like, what am I, you know, then all of a sudden the car lights up on the inside, but the source of light is above it. Like if you can imagine, I've never seen anything like this. If you could put a pendulum with a light source above a vehicle, like above the car, like this, mm -hmm. but very slow and fluid motion, like rocking back and forth, the shadows and the lights on the inside of the car are doing this really eerily. You've never seen anything like it. I'm looking like, my God, what is going on? And they're very scared. And one kid, who's the younger of the two, is like, I'm getting out. I'm getting out of the car. Stay in the car. It's over the top. Stay in the fucking car. He goes, no, I'm getting out. And he gets out and he videotapes a disc that was so low you could have hit it with a rock and I'm looking at this thing and I'm like that's what all the witnesses have tried to describe that's like if you could imagine the skin on the craft glowing like phosphorus on a beach that's what it looked like like the skin was alive and it had like um, like a yellowy orange color to it but you could clearly see it was a disc. I mean, it was not an orb. It was a disc. But the metal lit up like it was alive. I, I, I'd never seen anything like it. And, it. and it just wobbled like it was unstable, like doing this. And the camera guy goes, oh, my God. And then something about the batteries, and then boom, it shuts off. I looked over at Chuck Clark. I said, this is the video everyone's been waiting for unbelievable how do you know this is real because every if it's not real all my bs meters are going I, off right now dude fair enough i get it fair enough i saw this video with my own eyes of course yeah. it's a video though it's a video for sure no question and about you it no they make fake videos absolutely it was 1995 and they could have but why wouldn't if 1995 it's harder yeah it, why, but but why it's never been released to the public why would you create a fake video what year did you see it i saw it like 95 and so it's out there somewhere. No, it's not. It's in Chuck Clark's got a copy of it. The, the story continues. No, but I mean, it, someone has. Oh, it. yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, in fact, if, if those two boys that, that shot it are out there, please come forward. Like, please. Why? How come no one's acquired this? So, so I, I said to Chuck, oh, my God, this is great. I can use this in my, in my movie. Right? Great. He goes, oh, no. No, no. They're terrified. I said, well, look, just put me in touch with the guys. You don't have to, like, give... But wait a minute. They're terrified, but they give it to a guy who Look, lives in a I'm trailer? Just, hey, I'm just telling you. Do you know what I'm saying, though? Uh, absolutely. Hey, I'm really terrified. I don't I, want this getting out, but I'm going to give it to you. I get it. Guy who lives in a trailer. I get it. 
What does this guy do for a living? He's a he was a former military guy and he's he's retired. But just a retired but military guy for a on the trailer. Here. This guy's a fed. So that that I he know. doesn't even live there. But, no, he, but, he, but, <laughs> he probably put on some fucking okay, overalls so the story to hang gets out better. with you. The story is gets his better. name Ray Epps. I I know Joe. I believe me, I get it. But the story gets better. Okay, just okay. sit tight. Okay. Because I went on a couple of podcasts and I said, screw it. I don't care anymore. I saw this video. I'm going to start talking about it. Chuck Clark said, if you ask me again after like 10 years or 12 years, I'm never talking to you again. So I was like, I, of course, asked him again. I said, I'll give you 30 grand for the video. And he's not talking to me. So I went on like a concrete podcast and I went on this guy, Julian Dorian's podcast. And I went on a bunch of other podcasts and I gave the whole story. Let's let somebody else pick up the ball and run with it. I'm just telling you what I saw. Okay. I get a I get contacted a couple of years ago by a by a guy who goes I saw that video too. Then another guy contacts me and he goes he goes I got I'm a private investigator. And I find people. I said, "Well, his name's Chuck Clark. Go go to it." So he finds him. Right at that time, I'm going on the Impulsive podcast with with uh, Logan Paul. And I tell Logan Paul the story and he has exactly the same response you have. And I don't blame you. Okay. I'm not here to convince anybody of anything. I'm just telling you what I saw. It was very impressive what I saw. Very impressive. If it was a fake, my God, that was well done. But, I mean, he should be making movies with Spielberg. So anyway. What is this gentleman's name who has this again? Chuck Clark. Chuck, so, what are you doing, Chuck? Look, well, let me finish. So Logan Paul, he's like, I want to I wanna go to this guy's house. I say, hey, I got the guy, he's got the information. Logan's like, hey, this is all behind the scenes. So <laughs> Logan, Paul, takes, uh, I put him in touch with this guy, and this guy lives in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it was like, Logan Paul takes a Mercedes with a bunch of guys and $100,000 in cash, a big brick. And he goes out to this guy's house in the middle of the desert. And Logan calls me in the middle of nowhere. And he's like, are you sure your contact's legit, dude? My phone doesn't work. I'm in the middle of nowhere. I got 100K cash in my pocket. And I can't find this guy. I said, no, I'm sure he's good, you know? And uh, so Logan goes in there and meets Chuck Clark. And Chuck Clark's like, yeah, I got the tape right here. And so he says, I'll give you 100 grand for it. And the guy says, no way. And so Logan Paul was the going to reveal this for the first time logan paul has got a button camera on his on his dress on his clothes so logan paul's like all right well this guy doesn't want to you know he's going to die with it so let's get you know let's get this thing on camera so logan's like well let me see it at least so logan like looks at it with this thing and oh could you show it to me again gets another angle gets another angle and uh and then he leaves so logan's like I don't know if I want to go public. 